going to bring you the survival adventure of a lifetime. But first, a little magic. The tiny town of Colon, Michigan, likes to think of itself as the most magical place on Earth. It's only got 1,200 people, and downtown is just two blocks long, but once a year, you can see what they mean. When August rolls around, a thousand magicians show up. Professionals like Harry Blackstone, Jr., and amateurs from all over the globe. And as fast as you can say, abracadabra, Colon is transformed into the magic capital of the world. Fifty-one weeks out of the year, it's a normal place, a tiny little American town. But for a few days every August, hocus pocus, presto changeo, something strange happens to Colon, Michigan. Once a year, Wizards, tricksters, and magicians of every color and stripe suddenly appear in town for the annual magic get-together. Pretty cool, eh? Just, just, I don't know why we do this. It's one of those things. I have no idea. Would you like some, perhaps? It's not white water sports, it's National Geographic, you know, oh. all the old oh. naked people. Right we've got a show for you tonight, and to start the show, we've got everybody's favorite. He's Colin's own Blackstone. Something. Yes, here's a little something that you may have seen at the showroom earlier today. But if not, may I invite you to watch? Watch carefully. It has to do with this bird in a cage, a canary. While you're watching, our canary will disappear right from the tip of my fingers. And you'll not see where it goes. I hope. Up! I got it working. <laughs> Colon usually has just over a thousand residents and only one traffic light. But this wide spot in the road doubles in size when the magicians come to town. Probably the best known performer is Harry Blackstone Jr. The son of a famous magician, Blackstone was born and raised just outside of town. I come back here every year during the magic get-together, something that's been going on for over 50 years. And we call it a get-together because it is literally that. We no, no, that trade some traditional oh, ideas and merchandise is available, but this is a time to uh, kind of sit with your friends and to enjoy the nice sunshine and uh, kind of kick back. Gentlemen, my name is Slint. I'm a wizard, and today I'm going to whiz for you. Come over here. That's all right. Keep smelling now. You'll show me. Look at those teeth. Look at those teeth. Show me your teeth. Show me your teeth. <laughs> Looks like an overcrowded cemetery. Pick a card. That's right. Get in there. Choose a card. Pull it out. Hold it up. Show it to everybody. Look, watch this. Hello. How are you doing? <laughs> did, did you see my mouth move? No. Well, then look. Hello. It's no coincidence that Colon hosts the annual convention, since the town is also home to the Abbott Magic Company, the largest magic manufacturer in the world. Originally called the Blackstone Magic Company, the business was founded in 1934. Well, I think I'm just in time. Here I am. How do you do? I thought I'd be in time. Two famous vaudeville magicians, Percy Abbott and Harry Blackstone Sr., moved to town and went into business together. As I am about to saw, I believe you too. Harry Blackstone Sr.'s most famous illusion, sawing a woman in half, is still a classic.
the Abbott and Blackstone partnership lasted only six months. The two magicians parted ways after an infamous falling out, and the business became simply the Abbott Magic Company. You like that? Well, goodbye. Abbott's Magic, a vanishing elephant. You want to either rent or buy a vanishing elephant. Today, the company is owned by Greg Bordner. Abbott's Magic makes magic tricks, which we send to people all over the world that are interested in entertaining. We start from scratch. We buy plywood by the uh, ton, and uh, we have a staff of 15 people which uh, make magic tricks year-round. The Magic Company's catalog features over a thousand tricks. The cheapest ball and cup set will set you back two bucks, while a custom-designed illusion, like the Blackstone Buzzsaw, can cost a few thousand dollars. But professional tricksters aren't the only customers. Most magicians, it seems, get started at a tender age. My mom and dad stuck me with a magic set when I was four years old, and I was burnt from there on in. I've been doing magic since I was like five years old, I guess. Magic really brought me out of my shell. I was shy when I was younger, and it gave me a chance to open up. It's an old family curse. My family settled in Salem, Massachusetts in 1628. It's been with me ever since. The Chinese found that if they rub the ring slowly, they appeared to join. I assure you, it is only an optical illusion. It does not, in fact, take place. For if I blow on them, like rings of smoke, they come apart. their start, every magician will tell you magic is a kind of addiction. The art of making the impossible seem possible can be a great deal of fun. There it is. Here's three ropes. You can do exactly as I do. Here. And when you are good at it, you can perform it for your friend over there, okay? All you have to do is hold it here. Hold it real tight. And he disappears and he's all gone. Stand right there, you gotta look close, because the closer you watch, the less you see. Okay, just like that, just like there, and it disappears. There it is, like there. Now, just before, remember the last time I did that like that, and it seemingly disappeared, and I went like that, and it was gone, and I reached under there. This time, if I want to find it, I can reach right under here, just like that, and find it. How about that? If you pull on a tassel, it becomes a tassel, a tassel becomes a tassel, and it goes back and forth all day like this. It never fails to go wrong. Being a magician is a very uh, vague term. It can be a lot of different things, as magic can be different things to different people. So uh, it's really an actor playing the part of a magician is the best way to describe it. The better actor you are, the better the magician you are. Legs feel lighter and lighter and lighter. So light, in fact, that it feels as if it almost takes an effort to hold them down. So light, in fact, that if it were possible, it feels as if they could rest suspended on absolutely nothing but the air itself. Okay, I'd like to demonstrate the illusion of the torn and restored newspaper. Now, if you've never seen this particular effect, what I do is tear a newspaper completely to shreds, and then with the sheer magic of mental concentration, cause the pieces to recombine into the very same newspaper. So you'll know it when you see it again. I page through the paper very slowly. I ask that you remember some picture or ad from somewhere with it. Now, the reason I say that this is an illusion is because I never really tear the newspaper. Now, sometimes people think I'm tearing the newspaper because they think they hear paper tearing. Other people are deluded by the fact they think they see separate pieces. But sitting up close like you are, you can see this is not actually the case. When I've done this, I kind of squinch it all together, a little kind of a bare-handed welding process I've invented here. And then the paper is completely restored. <laughs> you don't seem to believe me. Well, take a look. Remember the pictures? Do I believe in magic? Now you have to define what is magic. Because I watch some people when they're on stage, and there's a moment of magic. There's a suspension of belief. I like to really be fooled. So do I believe in that moment? Yes, I believe in that moment. Hi, bud. But to create that moment of magic, most tricks require some real nuts and bolts. As senior carpenter for the magic company, 
Bud West has some 40 years experience as the brains behind many a mystifying illusion, including some of Houdini's most famous tricks. There is not really any magic. If there were magic, <laughs> I mean, if we could all just wave a magic wand and have things the way we wanted them to be, that's what I mean when I say there is no magic. There are tricks and illusions. Do me a favor, if you might, I'll have you examine this, uh, this knife. And we're going to do a little trick where we pour liquid from one container to the next. This is to look fair. Thus it is. And the magic, folks, will happen when I'll take the skewer, that being this knife here, and actually thrusting it through the cup. Now, mind you, before I've had people actually, when I do this trick, applaud, which makes for a pretty good trick. Sir. If you want an illusion, we don't care. We'll work on the idea. You want to walk on water? We'll work on the idea. Hold on to the handles on each side. But even for the experts, the Are technical aspects of illusion making Not can be, twice. well, we tricky. If the magician says to me, I'll give you an example. If he says to me, my assistant will fit in a six-inch area, I add inches to that because I have yet found anybody. I don't care what the body is. But you will find that the head requires a little more than six inches usually for that individual to be comfortable. I like to add to it a little bit. And that's twice. Let's give him a big round of applause. <laughs> Right straight through that corner. Sometimes the person, the individual that gets fooled the most is the magician when he thinks that he fooled anybody. We also use this little magic scarf. Do you realize people actually stand and sit and watch? What do I think of it? I don't care if I'm from out magic. For most residents of Colon, Magic Week passes pretty much as usual. The local diner may be full of strangers pulling rabbits out of hats, but the natives here are hard to impress. When they start doing hard tricks, I'm sunk. Everyone likes aces, right? Right. It's pretty good to have. And when they start pulling out silks... Thank you, thank you. Hey, hey. I could just die. Hold out your hand for me. Hold on to that ball very tightly. I'll have my finger back. And that zombie ball. That ball is going to leap out of your hand, fly over and join this one here. Oh, I don't like that one bit. We'll try it again, right? Ready? Did you feel it go that time? Yes. You did? Oh, yes. Well, you should have done, because over here we have to... No, we don't. Um, turn your hand over and open it up very slowly and don't tell anybody how you did that. <laughs> Despite a tough hometown audience, the final performance in the high school gym always plays to a full house. Oh, there goes the introduction of the show, and we're on first. Ah! 52 pieces of cake. Now, you will notice that all of the cakes are the exact same size. There is no shortcake. <laughs> What I think if I had my way. If I had my way, I wouldn't sing. Specialty is an illusion he learned from his father, the floating light bulb. All right, if I let you look at it, promise just to look. Don't touch. All right, then you may see it now.
my father used to tell me, he said, you know, Harry Jr., everybody from 6 to 16 wants to be a magician, and those who never grow up become professionals. <laughs> End, when every trick in the book has been performed at least once, the magicians suddenly disappear. And the little town of magic becomes a farm town once again. You know, I love magic. I'm thinking of going to Colin for the festival myself next year. Second thought, maybe straight to Vegas. 